Welcome, in this video we're going to talk about the enzyme lab. Now this lab has us look at factors that can affect the rate of reaction or the factors that affect enzyme action. And there are basically four main factors that affect enzyme action. The amount of enzyme itself, that's the enzyme concentration. The amount of substrate con available, that's the substrate concentration, how much substrate is there to interact with the enzyme. Then the pH can affect the rate of reaction and the effectiveness of the enzyme. And then the temperature can affect enzyme action as well. So, in this lab, we're going to look at the following reaction. It's actually the same reaction that we looked at when we did the catalyst demo. We're starting with hydrogen peroxide and it's going to be broken into water and oxygen gas. And in this case, we're not using an inorganic catalyst. We are using an actual enzyme, and that enzyme is called catalase. And we're getting that enzyme by blending potato cells and breaking open the cell membranes. And catalase has been synthesized by those potato cells, and we're releasing them into the water, and we're using an actual enzyme for this experiment. So. What we want to do is we want to see if there's a change in the reaction rate when we talk about those four factors that affect enzyme action. And how are we going to tell if the reaction rate is sped up or slowed down? We're going to look at um, the amount of O2 that is being released. So we're going to measure the amount of O2 being released. Now, here's the setup. We have a reaction chamber, an Erlenmeyer flask reaction chamber here, and we put the hydrogen peroxide and the enzyme right before we're ready to go, and we quickly put the cork on top of our reaction chamber, and we gently agitate it for 90 seconds. And during that 90 seconds, we will be collecting data, which we'll talk about next. But you'll notice that when this reaction occurs, if you remember, the hydrogen peroxide is being broken down into water and oxygen gas. The oxygen gas will escape into the Erlenmeyer flask, but because we have it corked, the oxygen gas will travel through the tubing, and then we have a graduated cylinder filled with water and turned upside down in water. So when the oxygen gas bubbles up into this graduated cylinder, it will displace the water and we'll be able to see the water being displaced as the oxygen gas accumulates in the graduated cylinder. Okay, so this setup allows you to measure the rate of reaction because you can measure how quickly the oxygen gas is accumulating in the graduated cylinder. And that will tell you how fast the reaction rate because the faster the reaction rate, the quicker the hydrogen peroxide is being broken into oxygen gas so it will accumulate and that will give us a very clear indication of the reaction rate. So, what kind of data are we going to be collecting in this activity? We are going to be doing each one of these trials where we vary um, the factor uh, that, that affects the enzyme action. We're going to be doing it over 90 seconds and every 10 seconds we will be seeing how much water has been displaced by the oxygen gas. So how many milliliters of water has been displaced by the oxygen gas, and that will be our indication of reaction rate. And we will do that for each trial when we vary either the substrate concentration or the enzyme concentration or the pH or the temperature. Now, once we get our data, the best way to represent data is to make a visual representation of it. And the best way to do that is to make a graph. One way to display this data is to make, uh, let's say we're talking about the, the enzyme concentration and we did maybe four or five trials of different concentrations of enzymes and we kept track of the rate of OT being released. We can graph all five lines on one graph and as you can see we have time and seconds on the x-axis and then we have the amount of O2 released on the y-axis and you can see as um, I don't have a key here but as the um, enzyme concentration increases 
this graph actually shows that the reaction rate is increasing. If you look at the slope of these lines, they are increasing. And we'll be able to take a look at that with the actual data which we produce. So, we're basically trying to get similar results to this, all right? After you to make those multi-line graphs, you can actually make a summary graph. And this is basically what we're trying to reproduce. This is substrate concentration. As the concentration uh, increases, the substrate concentration increases, the reaction rate will increase and then get to a certain point where adding more substrate is not going to increase it, so it levels off. The same thing with enzyme concentration. It's the same relationship. As the enzyme concentration increases, the reaction rate increases to a certain point and then levels off because all the enzyme is being used and occupied by substrate as fast as it can. It can't go any faster. The other relationship, temperature and the effect of uh, the rate of reaction, as the temperature increases, the rate of reaction will increase because the molecules are moving around faster as it's heating up. So the substrate's able to interact with the enzymes at a higher rate. You get up to an optimum temperature, and when you go above that optimum temperature, the enzyme actually begins to denature, and once it begins to denature, it means it's losing its shape, so it's not able to catalyze the reaction, and you see the reaction rate falls off rather sharply above the optimum temperature because the enzyme has become denatured. And the last one, pH, most enzymes have a specific pH range which they operate in. This particular enzyme, again, the optimum pH is at the highest rate of reaction. When you go below that pH, the rate of reaction drops off rather dramatically. When you go above that pH, the rate of reaction also drops off. So each enzyme is optimized for a particular pH. I hope that was helpful.